Hello and welcome to this tutorial that we're about to do, uh, making a full-on car from scratch for 3D printing. Um, we are going to be doing a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, as that is the requested car to be done, at least in terms of the 3D printing stamp for it. However, I thought I'd try and make this into a video for tutorials on how I do my cars, considering a lot of people Whenever I post cars, they ask, where do you get the file? Well, I make it. Whenever it comes to 3D printing and people wanting an STL file, they always ask, where did you get it? They never ask, did you make it? So, how about I teach you how to be the makers rather than the scavengers? So, we're going to do that, and we're going to do it in some very short... St well, we're going to do it in steps. I'll try to make each of these videos about 10-15 minutes, so then they're easier to follow through and decently numbered. However, within each video, there's going to be bits and pieces. So, let's get this one going, shall we? The first thing that we're going to do is find a blueprint. So what you want to do is bring up your way of finding it and type in the vehicle that you wish to find and then as well with the word blueprint. A bit slow at typing, huh? At least I'm not when I'm not under pressured. So the blueprint that we are using is this one right here. However, going off of the loading screen, you've already seen this. So File save this to a location that you know where you're going to find it. In my case here, documents. I have a cars to do list that I have everything in. And here's my blueprint. So, what we're going to do is now we're going to return to our Blender and we're going to set it up. Now, make sure when it comes to the units, the units, the units, where's units? units. I uh, have it on metric and sadly there's nothing we can do. Uh, adjusting this to actually be millimeters instead of meters does not work. Scaling this up so then what we export gets, well, stays the same size but what is done inside of Blender is smaller. That doesn't work. We, in order, so this it claims that this, if we press the N key, which, oh, hold on. If we press the N key, uh, we'll get this menu here, and it tells me that this is 2 meters wide, or 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. That is a lie. This is actually 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters. I have no idea what that's the case, and that car randomly stopped up the street. And so by changing these over here, it does not change the import or the export settings. It will always stay the same. So we are going to deal with that. However, what we need to do is we need to work out our keys. So this is the front view. And we're going to press number pad 5 so then it's orthographic. Number 3 is our side. If we go back to 1 and click 9, that is our back. And 7 is our top. So what we want to do is set for that. So what I want to do, now you don't have to do this exact thing for the sole fact that, well, all you gotta do is input the numbers that I put in and you'll get roughly the same idea. So what we're going to do, cars to do, I'm just going to bring in a car model that I got. Why am I having a hard time picking MR2? That is the wrong MR2. Just so then I have an idea of what I'm bringing in here. Okay, see, this is the size difference. This is on, this is less than yeah. It's 163 millimeters long. Millimeters, and trying to do anything rendering with this is useless because that light is meant to shine on something that size, not this. Okay, so we want our picture to be roughly this size. So, with our 3D cursor. Where's my 3D cursor option? 3D cursor option located at zero. I'm going to come up to add and we are going to add an image. Hmm, I want a reference image. Find our picture. 
Yosemite Roadrunner. And it is super tiny. So we need to make this thing big. Make sure we go on the move command here. Um, 50. 50. All right, so making everything a stagnant number. Now, we're going to need to come to the picture options because there are some things that I would wish to change. Noting here, I would prefer this picture only be visible when I'm on this orthographic view. So, in order to do that, I wish to turn off perspective, and that didn't do a single thing. That's probably because I want only axis aligned. So, I could click off of it, and it comes back on. Now, something else I wish to do is be able to see these axis points so I could actually line this up. So, what I wish to do is I want depth to the back. My, my. Does it not go back? Yeah, it goes back. Um, and I want just to be on the front view. I do not wish to see this on the back, which that'll be more so a thing when we come to the front view. So let's get this lined up. This blueprint style in particular, I like to align that, this here, align that in the middle, and then when that's not the case, which we can get rid of this now because we don't need it, uh, then I like to align something else, like maybe that door handle. However, we got that right now. There's something else I wanted that car for, so let's bring that back. And I'm just going to put it way in the air for now. Alright, so now with our viewer still at zero, we're going to add that again. Add image, reference image, Roadrunner. Now, here's a key thing. I know this might be the case on some other blueprints. You know what, just lock these. Useless locking figure. <laughs> no, not 500. Um. Ooh, ooh, no. Front, back. There we go. Yeah, let's do that so then everything actually stays the same. Great, I got sidetracked. Now we gotta figure out the center of this image, which... Eh, close enough. Alright, now let's go to the back, which, yep, the picture disappears. Come back to this, axis only align, turn off perspective. Add another image. Now, so far, this is going pretty smooth. Uh, depth to the back, only perspect, only axis aligned. And we want the rear. Now this one will be easier to align the back because we have that knob. be nice if I could get this to show up down there. There probably is a way. I just don't know. Tires are a little off the ground. Nice. And for the top view... <laughs> Sounds like cat problems downstairs. Uh, let's add last picture. I don't want that. I want reference. Reference. 50, 50, 50. Now this one's going to require stuff. So we need to rotate this image. So if we rotate it, this little command will down here. I want negative 90, 
I know I could change it right here, but sometimes this will come in handy more than this. And then let's make it centered the best we can. We can always shift these pictures around as well once we get started. So we realize that something's not center, we can adjust it then. All right. Whoops. All right, so that's the blueprints all set up. All right, on to the next step. Texturing? Why are we doing texturings already? Well, here's the thing. We need to make this viable for being a template. Chances are you're not just going to make one car, you're going to probably make a few cars. So why not be able to use this as a template to start from? And the best thing to do when it comes to that, especially if you want some pretty pictures when you're done, is get the texturing set up before you do a single thing. Now. I could do all these from scratch, however, that would almost deem itself a whole entire video. And chances are, I'm assuming that this is not your very first attempt at Blender. Now, obviously, maybe it is, because I know what, that was my case, I went, I skipped the donut tutorial, I went straight to car. Granted, I stopped at video 6 because I thought, hey, I got enough information, let's go. Yeah, well, I mean, it worked for sure, but... Okay, so what we wish to do is we're going to trade this cube and we are going to add a mesh, a mesh plane. And what we're going to do to this mesh plane is we are going to come down, add a modifier, and mirror. Turn clipping on. And that's that. And then what we're going to do is while that plane is clicked, shift, right click, control L, link materials. So now this can disappear it, as well as all of its other stuff. I want shift. Delete all that. Now we have this and all the textures are attached to it. So what we want to do in this case is kind of look at what we got here. So for a standard color paint, or more so rather to talk about what all I've done for each one, pretty much what I do is I have a texture for a car color, which this can be changed at will. I have my window texture, which is just a glossy black. I don't really have the windows clear at all. I have a plastic color that I use for grill, grill as well as plastic. It's a matte black. I got my chrome and my headlights separate, even though they're really close. I got my tail light red and my turn signal red. For car color, uh, you're probably going to want it something shiny, so something with clear coat and roughness. Those are the two that are very important. Uh, clear coat will make it give it that sheen to it, so a higher clear coat's good. For roughness, though, you want it downwards. However, the closer it is to zero, the more chrome like it is. So if you want a chrome car, then you add, then you lower the roughness down, as close to zero. I wouldn't go absolutely zero because then things can be a little rough when loading it. So eh, a 0 0.4, 0 0.3 is good. Uh, because the car that I had was more of a gloss color, I kept the metallic down. It's only a 0.2. I normally run that at like 0.5. And that's honestly the only important thing. So, we go to Windows, uh, I have the metallic completely off because I don't need that. Roughness, I left it at 0.5, it doesn't need to be chrome windows, but the clear coat's high. Plastic, roughness, very high. Metallic, I have that a bit up because mm, plastic kind of has that metallic-y black color. And I think I have zero clear coat, which I'm uh, breaking my rule of z absolutes. Chrome, yeah, almost max out the metallic, max almost max minimize the roughness, and maximize the clear coat. Headlight, 
Uh, pretty much the chrome settings just tuned down a little. Tail light. Um, a bit of metallic. Lower on the roughness, higher on the clear coat. Turn signal, almost identical to turn signal, but I just changed the color. Obviously, you don't have to have the exact same things I do, considering you could probably even have more, because I have a kind of basic. You could certainly add a lot more, but remember, these are made for 3D printing, not uh, Blender rendering. All right, one last thing before we end this video is we're going to align this piece. Uh, nice timing. Okay, so, ooh, back, 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 back. Okay, first thing I broke, leave the homing at zero, 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 and leave it here. Instead, tab it, and then bring this up to where it needs to go. What I'd like to do is I start right above the windshield. Because at least this is a good starting point, because I like to start on the roof first. Not to mention, it also tells me whether or not pictures are a liar. Now granted, this is probably more so my fault. There we go. Tires on the ground, so I can see that, and then if I go to the top, can already see that this is not centered. And let's go for just a hair. All right, so now we have that. Perfect. All right, now the most important part of the tutorial. Save as. Let's make that its own segment. Let's not. Um, so what we're going to do, come out here, find the folder that we wish to save it in. So where is my, I'm in the Ford folder. Cars to do. 70 Roadrunner. And we are going to, yeah, 70 Roadrunner. Mm. Click save. All right, that'll be the end of the tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.